What's happening geeks and welcome to another episode of Cosplay Chris Creates. Now this week I thought I'd do something a little different. I thought I'd create something for those female cosplayers out there. This week I'm going to be showing you how to make on a shoestring budget a one-to-one -one scale replica of Harley Quinn's mallet. Ah! Mr. J. Now, unfortunately, I did not get video footage of me making this. That's because I made this better half of two years ago. So back then, Cosplay Chris wasn't even around. But I did manage to snap some photos on my phone. They're at a high resolution of the entire process. So what I'm going to be doing is a slideshow with my commentary. And I'm going to do the best I can to explain every single detail and material used to create this. And like I said, this was all done on a shoestring budget. For something like this, you'd expect a couple of hundred bucks. But I think the total came to about 50, maybe the better half of 60 Australian dollars. I think that equates to like 45 US dollars. Not bad. All right, enough fighting about. Let's get to it. Now, before we get into the construction side of things, I thought I'd show you guys the original concept mock-up that the client sent to me. As you can see, it's very traditional, yet there's some different things going on there. So, this was also a way for me to see what materials I was going to use and how it was going to all come together. So, with that being said, let's get on to the actual construction. Very basic assembly of the body itself. Now the actual head of the hammer is just a large oversized PVC pipe. I bought a meter of it from Bunnings Warehouse, you can get some from Home Depot or any plumbing shop and it's quite cheap. Um, but I did have the team at Bunnings cut it for me because that way I knew they were using precise uh, cutting machines so it would be flat, it would be flush with the floor. And of course I centered and drilled a hole so the handle could fit through. Now I did it one size under than the diameter of the uh, wooden handle just to make sure it was a nice snug fit. Alright, next up, the ends of the head of the hammer was just uh, basic MDF board, cheap as, I think it was like $5 for a sheet. Traced it around from the size of the head of the hammer, the PVC pipe. And I had to make sure I went um, inward a bit extra so it would fit exactly flush inside of the PVC pipe. And the way I fixed it in, if you see that plastic cup there with the red material in it, that's actually auto body uh, filler. So I mixed that up when I placed the MDF in the PVC pipe. Just um, put some along the edges. Once it was dry, you sand it with different grits until it's smooth and flush with the rest of the head of the hammer. And of course, the handle of the hammer, that's pretty straightforward. It's just uh, replacement broomstick handles you can get from Bunnings. And that was easy done. Just cut it to length and jammed it in there. Now, the way I fixed the handle into the head of the hammer was once I applied the MDF circles to each side of the PVC pipe, I then sprayed in some expander foam. You know the stuff that you put into the walls of your house? I quickly sprayed a whole ton of that inside the head of the hammer and quickly um, placed the handle straight into the PVC and it just expanded and fixed the handle in there and it's not going anywhere. Okay, now we're starting to get some color into this. Now, if you're wondering what that steel-like strap is around there, that is actually the end cufflink of um, a PVC pipe connector that I just had sawn off. Um, so it's made to be like a steel band, like what you see on old timey barrels and whatnot. So I cut that off the end, cut it in half and made sure it would fit precisely around the PVC pipe as also accommodating for the handle itself. Screwed that in, gave it a couple of coats of chrome spray paint and that's pretty much it for that um, that step of the hammer. Now the colouring, the brown colouring is just a brown spray paint that also acts as a primer. So when priming PVC you have to make sure you get nice even coats all over it or else your weathering and finishing work will just scratch straight off. And the white colour on top is the same brand as the brown, I think it's Rust-Oleum, so it acts as a primer and a spray paint and the coating is twice as thick as any other spray paint, so it, I highly recommend using Rust-Oleum. Okay, now we're on to the red and black diamonds around the makeshift steel band. All that is, and I kid you not, is just contact adhesive, like that you put on your school books from the newsagent. Cut them in diamond pieces and just stuck them on bit by bit. And made sure they accommodated around the whole steel band. And that's that area done right there. 
All right, the trademark bullseye. Now, if it looks crude, that is deliberate because that is how Harley Quinn's mallet is. It is a very crude piece of weaponry. So I don't know if you guys can see it or not. There is a small dot right in the middle um, of the end of the hammer there. That's because I stuck a pin in with a piece of string and traced around circles to make the um, bullseye rings. And I just hand painted them because that's how Harley Quinn would have done it. So that was easy done. That was done with uh, Tamiya gloss paints and it adheres very well to the Rust-Oleum paint. Okay, now you're finally starting to see things come together. Um, this is my favorite part, weathering. I love weathering props. It just, you can go nuts. You can get creative with it. All this is, is black shoe polish and you put it on excessively at first, give it a couple of minutes and you wipe away or dab away the excess and it leaves you with a nice weathered texture all over the entire hammer. So that's easy done. It probably takes about 15 minutes, half an hour for the whole hammer. And I did that for the handle as well. So you let it soak into that wood and it gives it that nice worn appearance. Now for the big black rubber bands that go around the head of the hammer next to the um, steel like band, they were just um, pieces of rubber from Clark Rubber. You could probably get it from Home Depot and Bunnings as well. Um, they're meant to be used for constructions of pools. So I was happy to find them because that was exactly what I was looking for. Now to adhere them to the head of the hammer, you have to sand away. Wherever the rubber will be sticking to the head of the hammer, you've got to sand away back uh, the paint and primer until you reach the PVC again, raw PVC. Otherwise the adhesive will not stick properly. It'll just bond to the paint and it will eventually tear off. Now if I remember correctly, the adhesive I used was Loctite 401, which is some seriously strong shit. Like you do not want to get that on your skin because it just bonds instantly. Um, so you want to set it exactly where you're going to be sticking it down and just hold it there for about a good minute and then you can let it go and it'll dry naturally by itself. Okay, now it's not a Harley Quinn mallet without some gnarly barbed wire. Now this is an actual legit barbed wire because I didn't want to use real barbed wire because it's way too sharp and dangerous. So what I did is I got some thick wire with some thinner wire. I then cut uh, pieces of the thinner wire off and just wrapped it around the thick part of the wire, making it look like barbed wire. So. Um, safety still is an issue there. Um, Bianca is eventually going to be doing a cosplay of Harley Quinn. She'll be using this mallet, so I will have to replace this barbed wire with plastic or rubber barbed wire to make it convention friendly. Now, as you can see, I've wrapped some makeshift barbed wire around the end of the handle, and to achieve that rustic look, like you're going to need a fucking tetanus shot after handling this thing, all you do is get some rust oleum brown and black spray paint, hold it about 50 centimeters away from your barbed wire once you've rigged it all up, and just give it little spritzes, and that'll give it the rustic old appearance. Alrighty, we're getting near the end guys. Now the ribbon, that was easy as. That was just some canvas ribbon that I bought from Spotlight. You can get some from Lingcraft or any craft shop. And essentially I just got a black fabric dye and a red fabric dye. I did the black first because I wanted that to soak in as much as possible. Otherwise it'll appear blue if you don't let the dye set in enough. Now once the black dye is set, you just switch it around, get your red dye and dip the other end in. And it's not gonna be, um, exactly black and red they will merge together the colors will fuse together but i kind of like that it looks just gritty and crude so that look turned out really really well now the little white insignia at the end of the ribbon that was just white permanent marker so easy as and after giving the whole piece a few coats of matte sealer just to seal all those colors in we have our final product guys. Um, this took me on and off about a week to make, um, just juggling work around and whatnot. This was a really fun, fun build. It's on a budget, it won't cost you much to make. You can go nuts with the weathering, do what you like. And there you go guys, a one to one scale replica of Harley Quinn's mallet. So thanks very much for watching guys. If you had any further questions about the materials or the construction process, please drop a comment below. As always, thanks very much for your continuing support guys and until next time geeks always remember cosplayers do it best oh mr j